Okay, so welcome back to Baofeng Basics. We're going to talk about programming the UV5R and many radios like it uh, for repeater use. Um, it's for amateur radio. Uh, so we're starting from scratch. So let's say that you're... Um, you know, programming a radio, this is not with chirp, this is in the field. Uh, and you know what you need to know, and this is some information that you need to know in order to program an amateur radio repeater. Um, those things are follows. The repeater output frequency. Um, the repeater offset, also known as the repeater split, uh, and or the input frequency. So on two meters, usually um oh also you're going to need to know the tone squelch and that is uh or it's often referred to as just the tone uh this is something that is greatly misunderstood and probably needs to be its own video altogether um so let's say we know the all these things about a given repeater on two meters we'll start with that so the output frequency we're working with is one four five four three zero um, these are some settings that you're going to need to have for example you're going to want setting number five which is ban uh, deviation or bandwidth needs to be set to wide for amateur service um, we know it's a negative offset so you go to menu number 25 which is shift or offset or split and you do negative to get to that menu setting, you press menu, go to 25, or you can just do this. See, I hit two and then hit two twice, took me from two to 22. I didn't use the up arrow to 25. You can then press menu again and use the arrows to go through the options. So you wanna do negative, press menu again to save that setting. And then the next one, menu setting 26 is offset. Now to change the offset, which it's going to be out of the factory, it's going to look like that. To change the offset, you press menu again, and then you punch in what you want the offset to be. So if you want it to be the standard 2 meter offset, which is 600 kilohertz or 0.6 megahertz, you press in 000, 000, 600, press menu again to save that and then press exit to go back, you're not done. You haven't programmed in the tone yet. Now, most repeaters, not all repeaters, uh, require a, a CTCSS tone to open the repeater. A lot of these repeaters also transmit a tone. Um, that means that on the output frequency, they're transmitting a tone as well. So. For local repeaters, I strongly recommend programming in the tone that the repeater transmits as a receive, because you're receiving the output of the repeater. Anyway, so to transmit, to just set transmit tone, that's menu number 13. So you go to 13, you press menu, and you use the up down arrows, see off, and you can go through all the tones. So for the example repeater, it's 74.4 Hertz. Now receive tone, you can leave that off. Even if the repeater transmits a tone, you don't have to set a receive tone. Um, you can leave it off. Now, if it transmits a tone, and nine times out of 10, it's gonna be the same as the uh, tone that you need to transmit to open the repeater. And it's a local repeater. Program it for, for uh, you know, receive. So your radio is only gonna open the squelch, open its squelch when it hears that correct tone. See, so watch this. If I change this to another tone, say 110.9, and again, the volume's all the way up. It doesn't open. 
it doesn't open. Um, if I turn it off, it's going to hear every transmission on this frequency. Now, the nice thing about this function, you can also directly input a tone, um, is it is it kind of reduces annoying noise. Again, this is something that you're going to want to do on a case-by-case -case basis. A lot of guys leave their receive squelch off. So it's carrier squelch. So as long as there's a signal, um, it'll open the squelch. Uh, now, to uh, program in a, rate, a repeater that does not have a tone, again, we're talking about a tone to access the repeater, you can just leave that off. Um, so now we'll talk about uh, 70 centimeters. Uh, or no, we'll talk about, um, let's say, positive offset. Same deal. You just change shift D to plus. Um, now for 70 centimeters, the offset is five megahertz. Usually, again, not all the time, it's a positive offset. So you punch in the output frequency, which for our example is 442550. You verify it's positive offset, offsets five megahertz. And you program the tone if required. If you want to program the receive tone, you can program the receive tone. Same deal. So if I turn that off, it's still going to hear it because it's going to hear everything. Um, but if I program in a different tone, say 233.6, it's not going to hear that. I mean, it, it, it's showing you that the channel is busy, but it's not going to open the squelch. Um, you'll see on receive, see how it says CT right there? Um, that means the receive is in squelch mode. Um, if you were to turn that off, the CT went away. Now, when you transmit, it says you're transmitting the tone. So that is basically how you do that. Now, there's a lot of repeaters, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll start punching in some simplex frequencies here. Oh, right, huh, duh. Um, so now that you've set your, uh, that's all set, you can then... Go to memory number, or excuse me, menu item number 27 and program in whatever channel you want to, you know, make it, which I'm not going to do because I already have those programmed in here. Um, to program simplex, it's even simpler. We're going to go back to VFO mode, which you, you do by um, hitting the VFO MR mode and uh, punch in our simplex frequency. Now you want to go back through the menu and make sure that you have shift D set to off because simplex is a single frequency. So this should be off. Um, you know, there are some folks who run tone with simplex, but generally you want to leave this off, 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 off. Uh, if the folks that you're running simplex with, uh, you know, they, you guys run full tone squelch, then, then you need to set it for that. But, um, nine times out of 10, just leave it off. Uh, same with 70 centimeters. So let's say we're using 445.950. 
um, we are going to program it to make sure that there is no shift or split and um, you can leave the offset to whatever setting because if this shift setting is off it's not going to shift it regardless of what the offset is um, so think of it this way this is the amount of shift you're going by and this is whether or not you're going five megahertz up five megahertz down or you're not shifting see um Again, for simplex operations, you usually want to leave it off. There is no harm whatsoever of just transmitting a tone. Um, but because the folks you're talking with on simplex aren't usually going to be transmitting a tone, receive CTCS and, or excuse me, receive DCS need to be off. Um, you can only set one of these, by the way. Uh, if I set... DCS, then it automatically turns CTCSS off. Um, DCS is commonly referred, commonly referred to as DPL, um, DQT, DTCS, and uh, CTCSS is often referred to as PL tone or just tone squelch or just tone, um, or QT uh, for quiet tone, um, channel guard, there's, there's a bunch of, it's the same thing privacy code on FRS um, and that's pretty much it uh, for you know for amateur use um, oh this here yeah this is kind of a pet peeve menu setting 39 needs to be off don't leave the Roger beep on and you can turn the squelch tail elimination off that that doesn't really help anybody um, you know, do you want to have busy channel lockout on or off? That's up to you. Busy channel lockout. Um, here, I'll give you an example. Coastal waters from Cape Charles Lake, Virginia, border out 20 nautical miles. Advisor. Road is not working. Good afternoon. The rest of today, northeast winds 15 to 20 miles. Busy channel. Uh, wow. Busy channel lockout usually prevents you from transmitting when the frequency is busy. Um, this is more of a land mobile thing, but. Uh, I mean, I usually leave it off, but, uh, you know, that's up to you. Um, same with PTT ID, you want that off. Yeah. And these are, you know, things that you can set to your, you know, depending on your, um, your, uh, your preference. So let's see, there's that. Uh, what else was I going to show? That's pretty much it. Um, that's how to program repeaters. Uh, two meters, 70 centimeter. Um, vast majority of two meter repeaters are 600 kilohertz offset. For the 145110 to 145 so that chunk of spectrum, the repeater output, it's usually a negative offset, so minus 600. Uh, for 146610 uh, six, one, to 146985, it's also a... A negative offset and then once you get up to one four six excuse me one four seven zero 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 some repeaters use a negative offset but you'll notice that the input that's one of that's the first two meter simplex frequency so at 147, it flips to a 
positive offset. And usually there's a 15 kilohertz spacing between repeaters for this section. Uh, the 145 megahertz section is usually used a 20 kilohertz spacing. And some areas use 20 kilohertz for the whole band. It, it you know, that depends on your area. Um, up to 147390. 147990. So that, that's the top one. And then the bottom, 145110. Yep. So this is usually th uh, 20 kilohertz. Oh, that lets me do 20 kilohertz. Okay. So those are the repeater pairs. Oops, that's the last one. Yep. Um, so there you have it. Uh, two meters, 70 centimeters. And uh, stay tuned for more videos on Valfang Basics. Thank you for watching.